You know, here's something very interesting for you to understand. If I was one of the big podcasts, I'd have a kick-ass intro right now. But because I'm not, I get to say this. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and every species amongst the universe and the stars, everything on the world that listens to YouTube, and welcome to all of my viewers to the absolutely, completely random podcast for Saturday, June 8th, sorry, July 8th, 2017. I forgot I'm in July. Holy Christ, where is this year gone? Damn, seven months in already. Shit. Anyway, I got a fun-filled, fantastic podcast. This is going to be better than last week, I can say that. I got topics out my ass for this week, including, but not limited to, Five Nights at Freddy's 6 has officially been canceled. Cue the harps and light the torches, baby. Woo, it's done. I'm going to be rattling off and uh, doing a quick 30-second or so sound off of future video game movies and yeah I just have problems with that I want to talk about Lenny Vittor's apology video that has gone somewhat viral on YouTube and confused the hell out of me some sad news to report from the world of Marvel when Joan Lee Stan Lee's wife has passed away at the age of 95 but on top of that I'm also going to be talking about da 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 how Hayao Miyazaki won't be seeing Mary and the Witch's Flower. Eh, this little bastard. Another live-action anime adaptation. This one's gonna hurt a lot for Bleach fans. And Studio Trigger is coming to the gate with three, not one, not two, but three brand new series. And I'm excited for, I, I, I'm geeking out literally about the one. And I mean that. I, I'm excited as hell about it. But anyway... Uh, like always, and you know this by now if you've ever listened to my podcast, if you're looking for oddities, weird things, and unusual shit, or trading cards, DVDs, video games occasionally, what have you, just odd stuff you may not find anywhere else, check out my eBay page, A Roads 2012 on eBay. It's A Roads hyphen 2012 on eBay. I have a tremendous amount of weird stuff, and I sell it there. And let's face it, I mean, the podcast doesn't help pay the bills, and my part-time job sure ain't going to help pay a lot of the bills. It'd be nice to have something a little extra on the side to help pay, oh, I don't know, the electric bill, the phone bill, the property tax, what have you. The head tax for the townships. Yeah, what have you. But anyway, if you're in the market for some weird oddity collectibles, check out my eBay page. That's A Rhodes hyphen 2012 on eBay. It's A R H O A D S hyphen 2012 on eBay. And you can also follow me on Twitter at Otaku Rhodes. So this week's gone uh, pretty well. Finished up my vacation, went back to work yesterday, and worked this morning. Ended up having a na little nap twice today. And then we had an interesting little incident happen uh, here earlier tonight, which almost almost uh, took the podcast out of commission for this week. We had a power outage. Uh, it was the second one, too, for the day. The first one uh, knocked out power for a little bit. The second one knocked it out because i got to fix my clock yet. But since I don't have to go back to work till Wednesday, I don't really have to worry about fixing it up till Wednesday. Or at least till Tuesday night. So I'm happy for that. But anyway, it knocked out electricity. The first time it just flickered it, like, it took it down and it came right back. So we're like, okay... Like, it glitched or a little hiccup in the system. But, eh, then it went out shortly about, like, maybe 5.30, 6 o'clock it went out. And it stayed out to, like, I want to say 6 o'clock-ish. And it sucked. And it, oh, it really almost knocked out the podcast this week. But, on top of that, my class, the class of 2007 from high school have finally decided on a date, on a time, on a location for our 10-year reunion. And sadly, I can't make it. Uh, mostly, and I, I want to stress this mostly, because I care about you, my fans, my viewers, the people on Twitter that like to listen to my podcast, the people on YouTube that occasionally drift to it. I'd love to get a few more views. I'd be happy with 10 views a week, to be honest with you, instead of the measly little two I get. But I can't make it to my class reunion this year. It's going to be in September. It'll be September 23rd. 
uh, which is like the fourth Saturday in September. Uh, it's going to be held, ironically, at a tavern, in the restaurant part of a tavern. That's literally like about less than five miles from where I live. But the problem is, on top of money tight, on top of money being extremely tight, because I'll have a uh, inspection coming up for the vehicle for my uh, mom's car, registration, which will be completely due by then, student loans, car insurance coming uh, starting up again in October. I need to make sure I'm holding on to some cash, and 35 bucks a head, I can't swing that. If it would have been like 15, I would have went, yeah, sure, not a problem. I can swing 15 bucks. That's not an issue. Now, $35 a head, I can't swing that. I I'm sorry. I mean, if it would have been like $20 cheaper, I would be there. Of course, I would still also have the conflict of, would I have to work that night? I mean, I know I do like morning shift, which is what we're used to, and then like occasionally we have to do an overnight shift. But in this case, it's an interesting question of, could I actually, you know, would I have to work like Saturday nights? I don't know. I'm hoping not. <laughs> I've never had to, and knock on wood, I will never have to uh, start. But anyway, so that kind of uh, killed off any plans of me going to my high school reunion. And I mean, I know my one classmate's a little upset. I think she was looking forward to me going. Uh, but it, all in all, I, I just can't swing it this year, guys. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry, everybody. I can't swing it this year. Maybe in another 10 years, or maybe if we have a 15-year reunion, maybe in five years, I can swing it. I don't know. I mean, money's tight as it is. I only work part-time. I don't have a disposable income. Just because I'm on YouTube does not mean I'm rich. Far from it. I'm poor. I'm like uber poor. And I, I mean that. That's sad, but I mean that. So anyway... Uh, that's what sucks the most. I can't uh, do that. I can't go to the reunion because, I one, I'm not really going to have the money. Two, I don't know if I'm going to have to work. And three, I really don't want to miss the podcast and doing this podcast for everybody. It really makes my day. So anyway, I uh, hate to say it, can't make it this year. Maybe next time. I don't know. But anyway, um, thanks for uh, trying to invite me. And I look forward to maybe next time, maybe another time. I don't know. But I can't make it this year. But anyway, that's been my week. As interesting as it's been. So let's get into the topics. So let's, let's start off with everyone's favorite anime director and creator of uh, one-shot films, Hayao Miyazaki. Miyazaki-san, Miyazaki you are like... God to us. I mean, okay, Akira Toriyama is God to major amounts of anime fans. You are God to those that seek to make one-shot movies that are animated. That's who you are. But apparently, and I don't mean to say it this way, but this is how he's coming off. He doesn't want to come off his high horse and off his pedestal to go and see something from a former employee from a former uh, Studio Ghibli personnel. He will not be seeing Mary and the Witch's Flower. Uh, claims it's too busy on his own film. So, starting July 8th, which technically is today in Japan, well, technically yesterday because we're a day behind them, uh, film goers will be able to check out Mary and the Witch's Flower, the new film from Studio Ghibli's alum Hiro Hiromasa Yon Bayashi, who did when Marie was when Marine was there. I have not seen it, but I've heard mixed reviews on it, and I really have. Uh, one person though who will not be in attendance, Ghibli boss Hayao Miyazaki. I won't watch it, said Miyazaki in reference to the film. Reports uh, Senki News, solidifying the director's reputation as the grumpiest man in anime. Yeah, that's goddamn true. This is a man that refuses to retire. He will literally die with a pen in his hand. He comes in and out of retirement or times when I change underwear. I mean, it's almost becoming like every week I have a Miyazaki article. It used to be every week I had a Pokemon topic. Now it's every almost every week I have something about Miyazaki because he keeps making news. So I, I just like that. I won't watch it. Fine. Don't watch it. 
Uh, Mary and the Witch's Flower is the first film from Studio Ponic, founded by former Studio Ghibli producer Yo Yoshikai, or Yoshiki Nishimura, uh, who did Marine and Princess Kaguya in 2015. Aside from producer uh, Nishimura and Yonbayashi, several former Ghibli staffers reportedly worked on the film, and the slogan, The Witch Returns, invites comparisons to Kiki's delivery service, says Sankey. So here's the quote. This is a film you couldn't go, you couldn't do a Ghibli, said director uh, Yonbayashi. In an interview with Senki, uh, he goes, Miyazaki would say, I already did a witch film, so there's no need. But it's a totally different story. Yeah, it's sort of like the anime corporations and anime publishers. We have a fighting anime. We already have Dragon Ball Z. This would be like Funimation going, we already got Dragon Ball Z, we got One Piece. We don't need any more fighting ones. Yeah, but this is different from both of those. I don't care. Send it somewhere else. Viz just opened up their door. Did I hear you say you're turning down an anime? Come on in, my boy. Come on in. Yeah, you, you screwed up big time, Funimation. Hey, <laughs> you come in now. I'll get you some coffee and some donuts. And some donuts. And you hear the door just slam in their face. But basically, uh, he won't be seeing... Uh, Miyazaki won't be seeing this. So... Uh, Yonbayashi also revealed that while Miyazaki claims he won't see the film, he did offer support during its production uh, by sending the director a lot of melon bread, uh, which I've actually seen, and believe it or not, I actually got a free sample of. They had some at my local Walmart once. That shit is nasty, by the way. It is not the world's... Blech. That is nasty. I guess it was something new that some place was trying, and they were giving out like free samples. I got one. I tried it. I hated it. They recorded my thoughts, and I told them I hated it. <laughs> it was bad. Don't ask me which ones. It was like a couple years ago. But anyway, uh, so you know they'll share the news site will share their impressions of Mary and the Witch's Flower after it's released this weekend. I've heard good things about it. I actually would be interested in seeing it. In all honesty, I think this is something that, and like I said, Miyazaki seems like now he's coming off as, I am the only one in the industry that can do anime. I am the only one that can do this. If you go and see another animated movie, you're stabbing me in the back. And that's to me what it feels like. And, and it's not a good idea to blatantly call out your fans and go, no, if you go and see this movie, you're basically saying that I'm a horrible director because my movies can't live up to this. You're getting to be stubborn. I think it's... I honestly think it's time for you to pass the torch. You should have just stayed retired, in all honesty. It's time to pass the torch. You have done your fair share of movies. I mean, you have a tremendous track record under your belt, Miyazaki. I think, honestly, it is time for you to just bow out and go, Okay, I've done the best I can. I've done my best. I've given it my all. I will go down in history. Now, I understand like you're probably not making a tremendous amount that you can live on but still I mean you at least would be a little better off than most people I would think but still I honestly think it's time for you to just bow out call it a day and just say yeah I've done my part time to call it a day and have a nice retirement you deserve it you've earned it instead you come out of retirement more than I change underwear I mean I don't even change my socks more than you come out of retirement I don't use the bathroom more than he comes out of retirement. I, I mean, he comes out of retirement like almost every minute. I'm retiring. I'm not retiring. I'm retiring. I'm not retiring. If I would do that, I would get whiplash watching this back and forth. This would drive me insane. I need a scorecard soon to keep track of it. Uh, he says he's retiring again. Okay, taking all bets. Like uh, two months? Okay, you got two months. Okay, I'm giving two to one odds on three months. Three. Okay, yeah. That's basically what's soon going to be coming around Studio Ghibli. Hey, Miyazaki's retiring. I'm taking all bets. I'm giving two to one odds. He comes back in a month. And in all honesty, I could see that happening. It's sad, but I can see it happening. But I don't know. Maybe he'll go in secret and see it. You know, like the skies, like a politician usually does when they go into a porno theater. Or at least how they did in Crank Anchors. But anyway, uh, maybe... 
I don't know, like I said, maybe that'll work. Maybe it'll happen. Maybe he'll go and see it secretly and give his support. And he was just doing it publicly because, hey, I got to keep it in my image. But then realized, I have got to see this. I want to see how good they did. I mean, you can't tell me there's not an iota of pride and honor in you somewhere. I I'm sorry to call you out on it, but seriously, it's time to just let it go. And that's not a Disney reference, so. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so... Mary and the Witch's Flower is premiering this weekend in Japan. Hope to hear good reviews on it. I uh, haven't checked on any of it yet today. Like I said, had some issues with electricity and a few other things. But anyway, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, maybe Miyazaki will see it, or maybe you'll finally just come off your high horse. Either way, you know, something's got to happen. All right, it's time to talk about a subject I hate more than... Well, more than a lot of things, actually. Um, live action adaptations. Yep. We're going down this rabbit hole again. We're going into this well. Because another one's been announced. The live action adaptation for Bleach. That's right. The live action Bleach film is slated for next summer release. So, you finally have uh, more information coming out the live action Bleach film. It's directed by uh, Shinsuke Sato, who did Oblivion Island, uh, the live-action Gantz film, and with uh, Soto, with uh, Soda Fukushi uh, in the lead as Ichigo Kurosaki. The film's official Twitter account updated with the news that the feature is set for a t summer 2018 premiere. So it's going to be a summer movie next year. First off, that does not bode well. That that worries me. Uh, more information was apparently going to be released yesterday. I did not get a chance to check it, though, because I didn't hear anything new. But either way, I, I got enough off of this to go for something. So I just want to know why it is all of a sudden that we're doing live-action adaptations of every freaking anime series out there. I mean, we did Dragon Ball, and that tanked. You did Attack on Titan. They can claim it did good till hell freezes over. I swear it didn't. When you have a glitch in it that, oh, the subtitles stop midway through the movie, you just alienated 50% of your audience. Unless they speak fluent Japanese, they ain't gonna understand what the hell's going on. At that point, they're just watching a picture show and trying to piece it together in their mind. And that's not a good sign. You had, um, well, okay, Full Metal Alchemist. Uh, one actually looks pretty good. I will admit that. And that could actually work. It's like a steampunk-ish style. That could actually work. Again, though, I have no faith in live-action adaptations anymore. I mean, G-Savior sucked. So many of it. I mean, I think so far the only one I found that hasn't to that hasn't totally sucked was uh, Roroni Kenshin. And that was because it's a samurai flick. And I've stated that multiple times because it's a samurai flick. That's not going to suck. The Japanese people know how to do samurai flicks extremely well. And it's to me, it's something that they honestly know how to do for a reason. They don't just half-ass this and go, yeah, we haven't got a clue in what we're doing, but no. They know how to do that. But anyway, you get the live-action Bleach movies coming out. And what saddens me with this is that you're going to have uh, a we. I've never heard of this person that's going to be playing Ichigo. I mean, this is, in all honesty, this is an anime series that I remember as it took it forever to end. It was one of the only anime series that I could watch on Adult Swim. It holds a very special place in my heart for me. Uh, Johnny Young Bosch did the voice of Ichigo. Huge fan of his, by the way. He, former Power Ranger, went into voice acting. My one co-worker swears I should go into voice acting. I don't think I can do that because nobody listens to my podcast. I get very little views, so I don't really see how that's going to help. But anyway, I digress. So this is basically a series that I know it's been known to have a lot of filler. But what's ironic is that the filler works in this one. And... I know a lot of people go, but I hate filler in anime series. It pads the storyline. Keep in mind, the manga series was still going when the anime series was running. The manga series only just ended like a year or two ago. It was still running 
when the series was going. They literally stopped the series and said, that's it, we're done. Because they could not pad that out anymore. They ended it on a high note, in my opinion. Okay, sure, the manga ended a lot better because Ichigo and Orihime got together. I don't care what you noobs say. I'm happy for that. That was a union that I was hoping to hear and I was hoping to see. I don't care what you say about it. I'm glad they got together. But anyway, so you have Ichigo is going to be in this movie, definitely. I'm guessing Rukia or Hime, Chad. I'm hoping Chad. Uh, Renji, maybe. You know, uh, Kisuke Uraharo might, you know, I would hope he'd be in it. I mean, that would be pretty, it would be a pretty bad Bleach film without him. I mean, let's face it. Uraharo kind of made the series. I mean, Ichigo did a good job, but come on. They always went to him. He was the most experienced of the Soul Reapers, yet he just ran a candy shop in Katakura Town. Didn't really do much, but if the chips were on the line and you needed somebody to intervene, oh, damn if he did not intervene. I mean, he intervened. But seriously, I just don't know how this is going to work for a live-action film. I mean, let's remember Death Note had a live-action film. In fact, they had a sequel to the live-action film and then a standalone sequel to the live-action films. I I'm still trying to figure out how you can have a sequel to a movie where you kill the main character off at the end of the first movie and then you have him back in the second movie. You kill this ass in the end of the first movie. We saw it. I watched it. I fell asleep. I had to watch it twice. Duh. But anyway, not looking forward to it. In short, not looking forward to it. Really hoping that it uh, gets canceled somewhere down the line. It's it's gonna bomb. I, I in my opinion, it's gonna bomb because Bleach is one of the tired series now. You had, I mean, it was one of the heavy hitters back when it was still running in Shonen Jump. Back when the anime was still going, when the manga was still coming out, it was a heavy hitter. I'll admit that. You had Dragon Ball Z, One Piece, Naruto, and Bleach. They were the heavy hitters. Now all that's left is One Piece because it's still going. Naruto ended and Buruto began. Dragon Ball Z ended ages ago and just came back with Dragon Ball Super, which fans are still bitching about. Bleach ended, like I said, a couple years ago. I don't see anybody jumping at jumping on the bleach wagon bandwagon at this point but then again i could be wrong i've been told i could be wrong i'm not always right then again i've been told that by multiple people you know i'm not gonna say who but there are people that claim that i'm not always right and it's a possibility i'm hoping for once i'm wrong but i mean let's face it the evidence is in front of us on this one i'm just hoping that for once i am wrong but i don't know Anyway, I'm not looking forward to it. Uh, I, I would really be happy if they would just stop live-action adaptations altogether. I mean, the, it's kind of sad, and I remember this for one of my Andrew Rance videos. I made one about live-action adaptations, and somebody commented that it's really sad when the fan-made ones are better than the big blockbuster-bucked Hollywood ones. I mean when Hollywood's banking the money on this and they're backing this with bucks and theirs suck and here you got a fan made one where they made with like a GoPro camera on a steady ass thing hours of special effects and like after effect and all that they spent like a good year on that maybe they released it out on YouTube it goes gangbusters with like it goes viral gangbusters in a matter of days and you have literally have a movie that was made by the fan that's way better than the original because the fan knows what the show is the fans gonna know oh this is this show oh i can do this i can you know, we can get this exactly as it's supposed to be when you have Hollywood and you have the Japanese studios doing this, they don't follow true to the main plot. And that's what worries me constantly. Almost every single one. I mean, you want a prime example? I can give you three of them. 
Like I said, Dragon Ball Evolution, Attack on Titan, G-Savior, for God's sake. Death Note would even work for that. They either press right up against the plot while being outside of it, or they're just completely out in left field and the plot's at home plate trying to figure out what the hell's going on. So, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not looking forward to any more live-action movies of anime adaptations, so Bleach for me is out. I'm, d I'm done. I'm done with it. All right. Let's talk about Studio Trigger. This is actually a topic I've been looking forward to all week. Studio Trigger announced that they are coming out with three new anime series at Anime Expo. Ha ha ha. This is interesting. Now, these are the folks that came out with Kill a Kill and Little Witch Academy. They're also the ones behind uh, Gurren Lagan, or Gurren Lagan, which is a... First off, if you ever, if you ever have to watch a mech anime series that isn't Gundam, I recommend Gurren Lagan, uh, Go Danner, just to name a few. Though, I mean, Rossifon's even good. Neon Genesis is beautiful. But, I mean, honestly, my top five, Gundam's always going to hold a spot in my heart because I always loved Gundam Wing, and I always loved, you know, the Build Fighter series, both Build Fighters and Try. I love those. So that's always going to hold a spot in my heart, number one. But number two and number three are going to go to Go Danner and Gurren Lagan because both of those are so well done that it's amazing. Uh, Neon Genesis comes in at like number four or five, and then the other one would be Rossifon, which Rossifon and Neon Genesis are, in my opinion, basically the same thing, just with slightly altered premises. Instead of it being angels and Rossifon, it's creatures from a distorted time and space. It's a weird series. I've watched the whole thing, even the movie. God knows why I watched the movie. I, I, just, I don't know. I was a little delusional that day, I guess. I was watching it. I was bored. God knows why. But anyway, uh, this, sun, this past Sunday at Anime Expo, Studio Trigger announced not one, not two, but three separate anime series that they're going each uh, produced in conjunction with a partner studio. So first up, uh, so first off, they're partnering up. So they're not doing these solo. So it's going to be half the workload at least. A tremendous amount of the work will be done. That's extremely well, first off, in my opinion. That, that's really greatly done. Second off, this is, means that we're going to have a lot of decent things here. So the first one that they announced is Darling in the Frank XX. Don't know what the hell that means. Uh, it's being co-produced with A1 Pictures. Now, A1 Pictures are a strange, strange company. But uh, Trigger claims that the fans will be shocked by the talent behind the project when it's announced. Uh, it was announced this past July, July 5th. So, yeah. Uh, Super Samurai Cyber Squad Gridman. That is the one that I am the most excited about. And I'm really excited. But I don't want to get into that one yet because there's one more in between. I want to talk about Gridman on, on its own. There's its own little spot on here. So, here we go. So, from... Uh, it's the studio announced Promare. It's a series created by Gurren Lagann and Kill a Kill Dream Team. Hiroku... Or Hiroki uh, Imashi and Kazuki Nakimasha or Nakishima. Uh, I do apologize too, by the way, if I mispronounce any names on my podcast. I'm not that good with Japanese, but I am learning. Uh, which has apparently been under development for four years, and it's co-produced by X Flag. Now, X Flag, for those of you that don't know what they do, they do like a lot of mobile games. And they're not going to put... And I watched the video on this trending in Japan. I got to agree with the uh, creator of the video. They're not going to just put money behind something if they're not going to get something in return. They're stuck up. And they're stuck up in a good way. They know how to invest money so it doesn't screw up and it doesn't flop. They know what they're doing. 
You have people and companies that'll just throw money at a problem and make it go away. They realize that, hey, we want to invest in this. We want a return on our incomes. We're going to be in bed with this. You know, we're going to be in bed together on this. This is not going to be a you're taking it over. No, we're in bed together on this. But anyway, that's what you know is exciting about that one. Uh, Promare, like I said, yeah, Darlene and the Frank XX or in the Franks. Uh, what I don't even know how to pronounce that to be honest with you. But the one that I am the most excited about is Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad Gridman. Now this is the original Japanese. Now this is based off. I should say this is based off of the Japanese series from the 90s called Denku Chojin Gridman. And that was the Japanese counterpart of Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad here in the US. And I loved Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad growing up. In fact, to be, I own the first season of Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. I love it so much. It's one of my all time favorite series. Uh, the U.S. version basically deals with a kid named Sam Collins who accidentally triggers a program in his computer and turns himself into Servo, the computerized hero of the net and the grid. What Servo does is basically simple. He protects the grid from Kilocon. Gridman's basically the same thing, only just a little... Okay, it's a little more Japanese. And by that, I mean... You know, you can tell that it's a Japanese school. I have watched a couple episodes, by the way. So you can't say, oh, he's just being insensitive. No, I've watched a couple episodes. I mean, they use stock footage from the original series in the U.S. version. But it, when you watch the original, it all blends way better together. It, like I said, it's a little more Japanese-y. It's definitely, it's sort of like an Ultraman-esque show, but it's definitely good. I love it. So they're coming out with an anime series of that. This is the one I'm most excited about. I mean, I loved Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad growing up. I watched that before I went to school every day when I was in kindergarten. I would watch it every morning, then I'd go to, off to school. And I just, I loved the show. So, it's going to be directed by Akira Emania, who did Inferno Cop. And it's going to be co-produced with Subiyari, or Subiyara, uh, Yari, Yara, ah, Subu Raya, Raya Productions. I do apologize again if I'm mispronouncing stuff. It's based off, like I said, their live action TV series from the 90s, and it's also inspired the American cartoon series. First off, it was not a cartoon. A cartoon here in the U.S. is something that is hand drawn. This was live action. There was no cartoon in this. But like I said, it was uh, Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. Over in Japan, it was just called, you know, Denku Chojin Gridman. The theme song for that sucked. I will always hate that. That's the only thing. And I'll be honest with you. That is really the only thing I can always hate about the original Japanese one was the opening theme song. That's it. The show itself is beautiful. The plot is thrilling. The theme song is where it loses me. And that's literally, if that's the only thing I can nitpick about, that's a damn good thing. But anyway, that's the third and final one that Trigger announced. That's the one I'm looking forward to the most. I could give two craps about Promere or Darlene and the Frank. I, I don't care about either of those. I'm the most excited about Gridman. Let's do this right. I mean, this is like the reverse of a live action. We're going from a live action series to an animated, to an anime series. This is what I adore. I appreciate this. I could see this working so well, and I'm looking forward to it. But in the, all in all, Trigger fans are going to have a lot to look forward to in the coming anime seasons. I'm looking forward to Gridman. I could care less about the other two, but I, damn, I'm looking forward to it. So come on, Gridman! All right. Let's get off the little high note here. Uh, like I said, I did want to touch on this topic here a little bit. Uh, for those of you out there that know Stan Lee, the godfather of Marvel Comics, uh, it was announced yesterday that his wife, uh, Joan Lee, passed away. Uh, she passed away, sadly, at the age of 95. And it's sort of sad. I mean, I kind of agree. Uh, years ago, I watched a show called NCIS. 
it wasn't for the fact that uh, they got rid of Ziva, and then they up and killed her off in a later series, or in later episodes, they kill her off. I actually would probably still be caring about the show yet, but I just, I can't follow it. I'm not a fan of Wilder Valderamas. He can, he, he can just basically kiss my, he can basically kiss my ass. I, I don't care. I don't like him. I never liked him when he was on that 70s show, and I don't like him now. He's poisoned to whatever show he goes on to, but anyway, there was a character in there called Ducky who goes that, he, used, he made a line that, to me, always strikes whenever I hear somebody dies at a certain age. He goes, he used to say that they lived a long life. But then as he found himself getting on in years, he started finding that, that to be you know, less of the case. But it is truly sad. I'm not sure exactly what she died of, but either way, it is very sad. And my heart and my heart, my deepest condolences do go out to Stanley and his family uh, on their tragic loss. You know, this is something sad. I mean, my grandfather's still hurting from my grandmother's passing. She passed away. It'll be two years ago in December that she passed away. So th this is definitely something that that's gonna hurt him, and I do apologize. And I do. Um, I don't really. I, I was about to say the wrong thing there. I do feel sorry for him, and I you know I offer my condolences. You know, there's only just so much you can do. Uh, it's the best. I I can't do much, but that's the best I can do is just to let you know that you know we care. You, your fans do care about you. All right, so let's. Let's go off on some video game movies, shall we? Yeah, video game movies. These are fun. So, for the next five years, there's a whole bunch of video game movies coming out. Now, Ian and Pat talked about this in their CU podcast this past week, and I listened to it, and I thought, now wait a minute. I can talk about this, too, because I kind of like going to movies, and I know some of the video games that they're talking about. So I kind of like to throw my two cents in on this, too. Now, they did uh, whether or not it's going to be good or bad, if it's going to bomb, or if it's going to, you know, go gangbusters. So let's go through this list here. Um, 42 titles worth, for starters. So this is going to be fun. Number one, Altered Beast. Never heard of it. Uh, no date yet for possible release. Uh, feature film based on the classic 1988 Sega video game. Uh, I kind of am agreeing with the the, pod, the CU podcasters of Pat and Ian on this one that I don't think it'll be made. If it does, it'll be a miracle, but I'm not... I mean, my own personal opinion, I've never heard of it, so I can't really throw a dog in that fight. Uh, number two, Angry the Angry Birds movie number two. The sequel to the 2016 film, The Angry Birds movie. Uh, I think it'll be a cool movie. Uh, coming out in 2019... I kind of think it'll do very well. Definitely, if it hits it around the summertime and the kids can go out and see it, it you'll do you'll do gangbusters. I guarantee you that. Number three, Assassin's Creed Two. Uh, burn it, kill it with fire. That, that's it. There's my line on it. Just kill it with fire. No way is it even worth it. Uh, no release date. No no even year. No plot. Uh, it's a planned sequel. If it even gets made, it'll be a miracle. I mean, Assassin's Creed, to the best of my knowledge, did not do too well. I don't remember anybody actually liking it. I don't remember anybody actually seeing it. I don't remember hearing good re good reviews on it or even word of mouth on it. So that's kind of bad. Number four is Asteroids. An action story based on the classic video game. Uh, no. No. No, 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 no. We, we have No. Just, just no. Borderlands. Uh no. I mean, seriously? The premise of it is a feature film based on the popular video game set on the abandoned fictional planet of Pandora, where people search for a mysterious relic. Eh, no. Dante's Inferno. Not to be confused with, I'm pretty sure there was a Pierce Brosnan movie called Dante's Inferno. Where he and a few dozen people were trying to escape a mountainside that was literally on fire from an active volcano. And there was a scene in there that will haunt me to the day I die. Where the grandmother literally sacrificed her life by jumping into the acid-filled water to push the boat. 
because they were on this little island. The water around the island became so acidic that it was starting to cut off their oxygen. And they thought, look, we have one last chance. Let's just take the boat, row across as fast as we can. But it was like a motorized boat first. They tried rowing across then after the motor gave out. Then the grandma just hopped out of the boat and literally started pushing them. And they pulled her out of the water like the bottom half of her was gone. And she was literally like torso only. There was no legs left. I think like above, like below her knee, I think is where they cut it off. But still, that will haunt me to the day I die. Not to mention that Dante's Inferno is also best known as a book with the inscription over the gates of hell, Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. It shows you I'm a culturized swine, but a swine nonetheless. But anyway, uh, I don't see that doing too well. Detective Pikachu! A feature film based on the popular Nintendo game Pokemon. I can see this doing well for one reason only. You pitch it in the summertime, kids are going to go see it, and you're basically banking on Pikachu. If you give this thing a PG rating, it might pull Transformers the movie. The original, and I'm talking like back in the 80s version, like the 85, ver, the 85, 86 version. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not going with, oh, we're talking Transformers Michael Bay. No, 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 no. I'm talking like way back in the 80s Transformers. It just had its anniversary Transformers. That's the one I'm talking about. The Division. Eh. Let's see here. Um, the plot of it is, as the battle to take back New York City wages on, Jillian Hall and Christian work together to restore order while the fractions have their own agenda. Yeah, no. I'm just, no. The last thing we really need right now is another war movie. I think we have enough of those coming down the pipeline. This is definitely not one that I see going too well. Number nine, Far Cry. A feature film based on the video game Far Cry, in which a former Special Forces operative tracks down a missing journalist. Bomb. That's, that's what I'm thinking it's going to do. It's going to tank. Firewatch, based on the popular 2016 video game developed by Campo Santo. Ever heard of it? Don't know anything about it. Bye-bye. I think it's going to go in the trash can. Number 11, Five Nights at Freddy's. And I do not see this. First off, this thing is Scott Cawthorn's, I swear it's his swan song. Because, like I said, I got another topic about Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's because he just canceled uh, the sixth game. The sixth game in the series has been canned. This, I think WB, I think Warner Brothers wants to get their hands on this one. I don't see that ending well for anyone involved. I don't see how, I mean, all they're basically going to do is creep out people. They'll never want to go to a Chuck E. Cheese. I'm being honest with this, and at the same time, I'm not trying to be an ass, but I'm serious. This is definitely going to be creepy. So, I don't see that ending too well. Fruit Ninja, plot unknown, live action feature film based on the mobile app game. Eh, I do not see that doing too well. I see, I see that tanking. I should just get an eh or bing. That, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go eh for ones that I think are gonna suck, and bing for ones that I think are gonna be good. So let's just do that. I got about uh, 30 more to go. I come up with the system. I'm pretty good in the list here already. I'm getting kind of tired. My eyes are getting heavy here. Number 13, Gears of War. Uh, on the planet Sarah, a former POW, it's civilized, a civilization's best hope in their fight against the Locust Horde, a race of creatures who emerged from underneath the planet's surface intent on eliminating humankind. Eh, I'll go with that. I I'll go in between. Because at the same time as it sounds good, it doesn't sound good. It's, it kind of sounds like another ripoff of every single science fiction plot you could imagine. And seeing a lot of those in movies are getting stale and repetitive. I mean, almost every other movie nowadays is a science fiction, last of their kind sort of person. Number 14, Ghost Recon. 
Feature film based on the popular video game centering on a squad of U.S. Army Special Forces soldiers with state-of-the-art weapons. I believe that will bomb. And the reason why I think that is because I just don't see that being a good movie. I don't see people going to the theater counter and going, I want two tickets or I want a ticket to see Ghost Recon. I see people going to see, like, the Barney movie over that. Uh, number 15, God of War. A Spartan warrior faces off against, well, you know the plot, mythological creatures in an effort to defeat Ares, the God of War, feature film adaptation of the video game. I actually think that'll do well. I'm going to give it a bang. Bing! Bing, 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 bing! I, I'm sort of going to give it. Uh, I think that'll do well in the fact that as a movie plot, it's not bad. It's sort of like... Uh, Titans, that Titans movie with Liam Nielsen that was in it, it's sort of like that if you think about it, but at the same time, it's not as bad. So I could see that doing well. Number 16, Gran Turismo. I'm sorry, I'm just going to... Who the hell wants to see a racing movie? NASCAR is boring as hell as it is. Gran Turismo is basically a racing game. So again, Half-Life, yeah, right, <laughs> they can't even finish the damn series, you expect them to even come out with the movie, uh, no date, release date, nah, I, forget it, if they do get it, it'll be like a science fiction horror sort of deal, or a horror survival sort of deal, I don't see it doing well, I don't even see it, in all honesty, I don't see it coming out of the woodwork, I see a tremendous amount of lawsuits stopping it in production, and that's the end of that. So, do I see it coming out? No way in hell. Halo, forget it. I'm just, I, I'm going with hell no for that one. So, eh, no way. And mostly for the fact that if you're trying to lump so many science fiction shoot 'em up games into movies, you are gonna flood the market, and you're not gonna do well on any of them. So it's one of those they're damning themselves in the. You know, they're damning themselves. That's what it is. Number 19, Heavy Rain. Now, this one I actually think might do it. So, let me give it a bing here. Bing! I kind of think this will do good. Now, the plot of this is an architect, Ethan Mars, joins a private detective, a journalist, and an FBI agent in a race against time to save his son from a child murderer known as the Origami Killer. This, I kind of think, is pretty good, mostly because Heavy Rain was a very popular game for the fact that it was one of the first games for the ps3 when it came out it was so and i say that i think it was one of the first games it was so widely received so wonderful of a design so wonderful of a plot i see it doing extremely well but at the same time i mean it could have problems depending on which way they take it if they try to do it too much of a mysteries of a mystery movie they're liable to lose people having i'm kind of seeing like a saw-esque thing going on here with this one and that's what i'm kind of thinking is going to happen so that's why i said i'm going to give it a bing for now but as more information of it will come out it might get an ant so I, I don't know number 20 kane and lynch uh never heard of it so uh, mostly for the fact that i'm just not sure about it. I mean, the plot is a pair of death row inmates, a mercenary named Kane, and a schizophrenic named Lynch escape during a prison transport and team up to retrieve stolen furniture or stolen fortune uh, based on a video game. It kind of sounds like a tremendous amount of your other prison escape movies, like, oh, uh, Escape Plan, uh, Tango and Cash, just, um, you know, no, you know what? That, sounded, that almost sounds like Tango and Cash meets National Treasure. And I like Tango and Cash. I like National Treasure. I don't think those two go together. That's like oil and water or some really nasty, nasty... It's like milk and orange juice. It's nasty. Number 21, The Last of Us. Oh, I could see this yes and no. Let me explain why before I give it my final verdict. Joel and Ellie, a pair connected through the harshness 
of the world they live in are forced to endure brutal circumstances and ruthless killers on a trek across post-pandemic America. If memory serves, this, is a, this was a video game that Ellen Page had a huge role in, if I remember correctly. Do I see this doing well? Well, if they can get her to play the character, I don't even know if she's even acting anymore, to be honest with you. Hell, she could be dead for all I know. Um, but if they can get her to do the character, I could see it literally working. Because then she would literally be playing the role that she voiced. And you would have a series, you would have a movie that would be really good. You would literally be watching the video game unfold in front of your eyes. It'd be like one giant cutscene. It's like an hour something long. I could see that. So I'm going to give it a bing for now. Bing! But I'm holding back on a full, I think it'll do gangbusters. This might be like an oddity depending on how they how they play it out. Mass Effect! Uh, eh. Mostly for the fact that this game has now gotten a very bad uh, rep to it. A lot of people are kind of steering away from it. So many problems with it. Parents are pissed. Uh, fans are pissed. And in all honesty, and I do want to stress this, and I don't want this to come off the way it's going to sound, but it's true. This was a video game that basically broke the stereotypes of sexual identity. You could get with aliens. You could get with your same species, the same gender, what have you. I could see this coming out. And in all honesty, and I'm being honest with this, the only thing I see happening is it pissing off the LGBT community. Now, I could be wrong. They might enjoy it. I don't know. But in all honesty, this really seems to me like if they come out with this movie, they're going to have to put stuff in from the game so you know they're going to have some of this. And that's where you get on the shaky ground. Because when you piss them off, then you get uh, complaints, you get advocate groups starting up, you have petitions being signed, Facebook pages being made against the thing, Twitter posts being made, um, videos on YouTube against it, and all hell just breaks loose. Uh, and like I said, I mean no disrespect. I don't want to come off sounding like an asshole, but I, I honestly don't see it going over too well with them. And I'm being honest with them. I don't see this being something that they're going to like, that they're going to go, oh, we loved it. This is liable to be something that, oh, that really upset me, it really made me angry, and I really wouldn't blame them on it. And I just want to stress, I, I don't blame them on it. Because to me, the game was always a little creepy in that aspect. That to me seemed like something that they could have taken out of the game. I mean, all in all, it's a very good science fiction game. It's a good sci-fi game. It's a good sci-fi RPG-like game. That was something... That entire premise of it was something that I honestly th thought could have gotten, could have been gotten rid of the whole time. I mean, you could have had like a friendship meter or a trust meter or something. You really didn't need a romance in that. And that's where I'm going with that. That they didn't need. And like I said, I don't mean to come off sounding like an asshole or anything. I do apologize if I may have offended anybody, but I honestly don't see this ending too well. And like I said, I'm being honest, I see it pissing off the LGBT community. I I'm serious. Okay, the next one is Metal Gear Solid. Uh, based on the 1998 video game, I'm going to go with a meh. Uh, right in between. Meh. I, I don't know if it's going to work out too well. I don't know if it's going to be good. So, I, I, don't I don't know. Metro 2033, a young man, Anton uh, Artnom Protvik, is sent on a mission by a man named Hunter to find a man named Melnik at a fairway station known as Polis. Meh. Depending on how they play it off, it could be good. Worst case scenario, it could suck. I don't know. Uh, Minecraft the movie. I'm going to have to give this a no. Eh. Mostly for the fact that they'll be trying to capitalize on the entire Lego franchise. But Minecraft isn't Lego. And they're not going to capture the same love and admiration that the Lego movie did. And that, I think, is why they're thinking, hey, we can come out with this. It's similar to Lego, but it's not. That would be like coming out with Mega Bloks the movie. 
I mean, Mega Bloks is similar to Lego too, but you don't see somebody making a Mega Bloks movie. Uh, Missile Command, no. Eh. I see that being way too much of a War Games clone, and I think Matthew Broderick would sue somebody's ass over that, because I, I swear he's still getting money from that. Uh, Mortal Kombat. I could see a reboot for that. Uh, it's been a few years. I could see a reboot, so I'll go with a bing. Bing! I don't think it'll go gangbusters or anything, but I could see a reboot. Uh, Portal, I could see that. Bing! So, I, I you know, that sounds uh, pretty good. Here's one that I got. I have to agree with Pat and Ian again. Rampage. Uh, it's coming out next year. Based on the classic 1980s video game featuring apes, monsters, destroying cities. It's starring Dwayne Johnson. I think this is an actor that is now overstayed as well. Um, Baywatch sucked. Nobody liked it. I, I think I quoted it perfectly when I said it was like a bromance. Uh, like a really bad bromance into a sausage part, into a sausage fest. And that's literally all it was. It was disturbing, it was weird, it was strange, and it was something that should have never been made. I honestly think that as punishment for making that movie, Dwayne Johnson should be forbidden from making films for like the next 10 years. He should be forbidden from being seen in the public eye for that. Just for making that movie alone. And now, oh, I I'm going to make Rampage. Just because you're an ex-wrestler does not mean you can instantly go into, oh, I want to be an actor. Open a business. Open a gym. Freaking make a YouTube channel and do, like, health tips. I don't care. Stop acting in movies. You are not the world's greatest actor. Schwarzenegger was better than you. When he was in his prime as an actor, he was better than you. Hell, he's still better than you. What am I thinking? He's still better than you. So I'm going to give Rampage an eh. Eh. No way. Number 30, Rent a Hero. Never heard of it. Based on the Sega video game title. Don't know. Sounds cool. I could see it being like a sci-fi CGI sort of deal. So I could go with that. So I'm going to give it a bing. Bing! But it's a questionable bing. Resident Evil Vendetta. I'm tired of the Resident Evil movies. We've had too damn many of them. I think they've officially killed off anything they had left. I'm going with Nam. Eh, no, no way. No more Resident Evils. Roller Coaster Tycoon. How in the hell can you make a Roller Coaster Tycoon? I mean, I could see it being entertaining. Like, you know, a kid designing the theme park. I mean, it could be like a kid's movie. Like a Nickelodeon project. But at the same time, I don't see that being the way that they're going to go with it. So I'm going to give it a meh. Meh. You know, meh. But I don't know how well it's going to turn out. Uh, Shinobi, based on the popular game by Sega. Yes. Bing, 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 bing. I see that doing extremely well. Shinobi's does gangbusters on the video game circuit. Hell, even some of the older copies of the games are going for, like, huge amounts of dollars. So, yeah. Number 34, Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, coming out next year. It's live-action CGI fusion. No way. I see that ending so badly. I see that... I honestly see that bombing worse than World of Warcraft. And we all know how bad that sucked. So, no. Uh, Splinter Cell, no way in hell. Eh. Uh, Spy Hunter. Eh. Streets of... Ra oh, hell no. Why do we need another... Why would we need a basketball game? I mean, nobody enjoyed some of the sports movies that were out. Why do we need... No, I, I'm going no. Tetris 2. Plot unknown. Part of a planned tre Tetris trilogy from Threshold Global Studios. How in the... Can you make a trilogy of Tetris? I agree. What are you going to go? I'm going to make a freaking Tetris movie and I'm going to make two more after it. No. God, no. No. 
<laughs> Tomb Raider. Yeah, why not? What the hell? I mean, Angelina Jolie kind of did it. Uh, the second one I heard sucked. I thought it was kind of good, but then again, every movie I like, people say suck. I adore the Super Mario Brothers movie, and people pan that thing as horrible garbage. I, I loved it. I thought it was good. Uh, so I'm going to go with yes for now, but uh, meh, yes. So, bing, eh, bing, eh. Uncharted. Well, we know what Uncharted is. It's literally Tomb Raider, but with a different... You know, character playing the main role. It's a male instead of a female. I'm. It's uh, gonna star Tom Holland, according to the site IBDM or IMDb. I'm sorry, IMDb. Uh, I'm gonna go with a meh, meh, because if it comes out at the same time as Tomb Raider, they're gonna be fighting each other, and it's not gonna end well. Number forty-one, Watch Dogs. <laughs> No. And last but not... I, I'm just going to go with no on that one. Just, just no entirely. And last but not least, uh, The Witcher. No release date. No year idea. Uh, Witchers are monster hunters trained and mutated as boys to have extraordinary abilities such as enhanced senses and increased physical strength and agility. I could honestly see this working. Only if they pan it as a science fiction action movie if they don't then I kind of see it going downhill and I mean that in a weird way because okay it, they could easily say no we're going to make it a science fiction horror fine you got to have at least science fiction in this if you're mutating people and you have monsters in this that's science fiction at least in my book it's science fiction so I'm going to go with the meh 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 I, I don't know if it's going to do too well. I don't know if it's going to suck, if it's going to do great. So, meh. And that's all 42 of them, folks. So, yeah, that's... Ugh. God help us all, right? God help us all. All right, I see him over the hour mark. I only have two more topics to talk about. And the next one involves good old Scott Cawthorn. Yes, the thorn in our asses for many video game lovers that want to just watch YouTube to watch videos about anything else other than Five Nights at Goddamn Freddy's. Well, good news! Five Nights at Freddy's 6 was announced and then promptly canceled by the asshole himself, Scott Cawthorn. And I love the picture on this. It's, uh, the picture's on Kit Guru. Dot net, and I love this. There's a picture of Freddy Fazbear just pissed the hell off. He looks like he is lividly angry. Like you just canceled my game, you bastard! And I love it. That, that's literally the best part of this. But anyway, after the series took a break from its biannual releases, with only one game in 2016, ah. Uh... Did you just hear an entire chorus of angels singing? I sure as hell did. Uh, fans of Five Nights at Freddy's were looking to creator Scott Cawthorn for an update on the next title. Cawthorn went on to announce the sixth entry into the point-and-click horror, no! before promptly canceling it before the fans had time to get excited. Oh! Oh, look, I just heard the angels again. Uh, in a statement posted on Steam, Cawthorn released that, uh, revealed that the project has been canceled after the amassing pressure to best previous titles and the negative impact that was taking, that was talking outside, sorry, taking outside of game development. And if you're hearing any pops, the local entertainment in my neighborhood is shooting fireworks off again. Fourth of July was last was earlier in the week, guys. Seriously. But anyway, uh, just wanted to say that just in case you're hearing it. Nobody's shooting anybody. I'm not living in a ghetto or anything. I'm not living in a gang-infested neighborhood. No, no. They're shooting fireworks off, and I'm hearing them. Just wanted to stress that. I apologize. Uh, back to the article, though. 
Uh, he was quoted as saying, After forcing myself to keep working on it day after day, I realized something. I just don't want to work on this. With each game's release, I think the expectations get higher and higher for the next, and rightfully so. Each game should, in big-ass letters, be better than the last. But that pressure starts to mount, and I fear that I've been neglecting other things in my life. For the sake of trying to keep up with those mounting expectations. You created a video game that got too big too fast. You made a shit ton of cash. It's time for you to retire to your small island in the Caribbean and call it a life. On top of this, you created Five Nights at Freddy's World and two freaking books. It's time to ride the royalties of that horse straight to the bank, my friend, and call it a day. Stop trying to outdo yourself. You're never going to succeed at that. In an attempt to minimize, to minimize disappointment and possibly save ideas for future entries, Cawthorn is keeping the details of the canceled game under wraps. Okay, so it could have been... Um, I just couldn't get the program to work, or I'm going to change formats, or I kind of grow tired of the characters, or I'm having psychological nightmares that my creations are going to come and eat me during the night. I'm going to go with the latter. Uh, so after giving this a lot of thought, I've decided that I'm going to stop working on it. I'm not going to reveal anything else about what the game was, and I've asked other people involved to never divulge anything either. It's just not going to be talked about. I call bullshit on that. The world is connected to the internet. You cannot tell me that somebody is not going to speak. Half a month down the road, I guarantee you, someone will start a blog post on Reddit or on the deep web, and they are literally just going to be ripping asunder what you said. No, no, no. This was what the sixth game was going to be. It was going to be taking place at a new Freddy Fazbear's in the future. And it was going to involve all the animatronics that are all coming back to life and just haunting and scaring the shit out of kids. Or it was going to take place right in the middle of the bite of 87. I, I don't know. No, wait, no. That was the second game. Um, uh, well, I, I'm not entirely sure. You know, it could have been taking place and explaining more about the purple guy. Or, you know, all the crap after the end of the sixth game. Or the fifth game. I, I just I just don't know. I do. It kind of sucks. I'm, I, you know, I don't know why he canceled it. I don't think anybody's really going to know until one of those people get pissed off. I guarantee you a tabloid site somewhere will pay one of them a hefty price for the goddamn info. Hell, if I had the money, I'd pay him to find out. Just to make a video on it and get some well-deserved income from it. But I'm not that greedy, I'm not that disturbed in the head, and I'm not that sick in the mind. Plus, I can't stand the damn game. It scared the shit out of me. Literally. I actually watched the fifth game. Now, I, ever since I was a kid, I've had a small, inert fear of the dark. Everybody has. Ever watched Doctor Who? It's because of a being called the Vasta Narada. But anyway, the fourth game... I literally crapped my pants. I'm not joking on this. The first time in my life that I've ever embarrassed enough to say this. I was watching this. The jump scare scared me so much. My heart stopped for, for a couple seconds. And all of a sudden, I felt a nice warm spot in the back end of my pants. It was not pleasant. Scared the crap. And that's where they lost me. Right then and there is where you lost me. I put up with the first, second, and third. The fourth one's where you killed me off. That's where I was done. But in all honesty, it was a horrible experience. Talking about it, there, now, now you know a deep dark secret about me. It was not pleasant. It wasn't fun. And like I said, I think it is honestly time for uh, for Cawthor to finally just retire and call it quits. And now Matt Pat from Game Theorist can finally shut up and get some mental therapy for once. Because I'm sick and tired of his... I only get views when I do stuff about Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh-huh. What about your Mad Max? Your Pokemon? Oh, that's right. I'm, I'm sorry. Ditto f you in the A when you did your Pokemon Go theory. Because then he popped up the next day. 
But anyway, uh, Cawthorn hopes to get back to what makes to what made game making enjoyable in the first place. Reassuring fans that this isn't the explicit end to Five Nights at Freddy's. Aw, oh, damn. I was hoping the franchise was going to die with this now. Oh, shit. Oh, well. I'm not that lucky, huh? Uh, in fact, the first game that I'd like to make would be something for you guys, he said. Remember Foxy Fighters from Update 2? I loved working on that game. It was a whole. It was a lot of fun, and it took a lot of pressure off me, knowing that it was just for the fans of the game. That's the kind of project that I'd like to work on again. Maybe I'll try my hand at a pizzeria tycoon game. Who knows? The point that the point is that it won't. It would be something for fun and something for the fans. Well. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what you were doing the first time. But then again, this was probably a hobby for you. You probably thought, hey, I'm getting a butt-ton of cash from whatever I was doing on the side. Why not do this for fun and get a little extra cash in coming in just for the hell of it? Oh, okay, I created a point-and-click horror game taking place in a screwed-up Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, let's put it up on Steam. And the App Store. Ain't nobody going to play this thing. I'll be lucky if I make like a couple bucks. 24 hours later. Holy crap, I'm up to almost $100,000. I mean, seriously, that's probably what happened. But all in all, I'm not a fan of the game series anymore. It's, it got too big too fast. Scared the crap out of me, literally. Got too big too fast. I honestly think this is the point when Cawthorn needs to just, like I said, just stop. Somebody just put a giant stop sign in front of him when he tries to go near a computer. Stop! You will not create another Five Nights at Freddy's game. You will do nothing more with the franchise. It is time for you to retire and just quietly push him out the door. Because the game's run its course. Sure, there are still questions and people are pissed. I don't care anymore, but nobody really does. I mean, the fans are going to be the only ones that will get butt hurt by this. Yes, they're really the only ones that are going to get butt hurt by this. But as far as I'm concerned, who cares? It's a game that got too big too fast. It's like Krispy Kreme. Except in this case, he realized it a little sooner than they did. Hey, I'm getting a little too big too fast. Everybody wants more from me. Yeah, I'm going to bow the hell out. And on that note, he did. That's a good thing. But Kit Guru says, and I quote, I'm looking forward to see what Cawthorn brings to the table when he returns to developing. Are you disappointed that there won't be a FNAF 6 anytime soon? And which of the series is your favorite? I'm not disappointed there won't be a FNAF 6. I'm not really a happy camper with anything. In fact, to be, and I have to go to the local Wawa, which is right by a Chuck E. Cheese, my ass clenches. I, you can literally break steel with my ass at that point. I, it, it clenches. It is not pleasant when I drive by a Chuck E. Cheese. Like I said, my ass clenches. Because I instantly think, if those animatronics come to life one day at a kid's birthday party, my God, that's going to be making CNN happy. No. I, I think Five Nights at Freddy's is done and should stay done. And that's my honest opinion. All right, folks. Last and final topic of the night. I think it has been that long of a night. Jeez. Anyway. Last topic for the night is, and will always be, Lanny Pator. Uh, one of the minds in the creative team of Team Four Star. I do love their YouTube channel, by the way. But I have to ask a question about this because last night I was watching uh, TFS plays Dragon Ball Z Attack of the Saiyans. And I'm like, oh, okay, I can get, you know, okay, I'm watching this. And then I'm like, yeah, I can get involved in this. But as I'm, re as I'm watching this, something over in the corner keeps catching my eye. And what's over in the corner is the words, and I quote, apology video. And it was new by Lanny Pator, and I'm like, all right, what's he apologizing for? Apparently last weekend, I guess at a, 
whatever convention they that he went to last weekend, uh, the name of it does escape me because I, I'm still trying to figure out what the hell he's talking about, to be honest with you. Apparently, I guess, somebody from Toei Animation came with a cease and desist or a stop letter, whatever you want to call it. I don't remember if it was a, if it was a C and D or if it was a you know restraining thing. I'm not sure. So what ended up happening was, I guess it was about a couple of the posters that they had. They had to take down some posters, and I'm guessing. From what I read and from what I saw in the video and what I heard him talking about, which still, I have to say, confuses the crap out of me, by the way. I'm like, okay. I'm like, that's fine. But here's what confuses me. Apparently, there was an issue or an incident or something with what he did afterwards. He posted a picture of himself on Twitter holding this letter that he got or that he received from the Toei representative. And I guess it sparked outrage. Uh, pissed off some people at Toei. Uh, apparently the fans have been uh, bitching and complaining, sending emails to Toei. And he's afraid... I I'm assuming he's afraid of massive legal repercussion. Because now they're basically taking out their anger on Toei. And he's thinking, oh great, and they're going to come after me for it because of my picture. So I'm assuming that's what he's apologizing for. But I'm not sure. Because I have watched this video three times. And it makes no sense to me whatsoever. Uh, he disabled comments on the YouTube video so that nobody could leave a comment. He's, he puts it up. It's not a discussion. It's an apology. Okay? It's an apology that your fans that don't know what the hell you're talking about don't, un don't know what's going on. And I'm one of them. I looked for the picture to try to figure out what the hell he's talking about. I guess he took it down. So I'm like, all right. And this is basically news to you. Why? And it's nothing. And it's, you know, interesting. But at the same time, I'm thinking to myself, he's upset because apparently they were sending emails to Toei. Okay. So they're sending emails to Toei. You don't think that every time they take down your YouTube channel, that every single time they take on your YouTube channel, that they are not sending angry, pissed off emails to Toei. Because YouTube doesn't hide that. YouTube just doesn't say, oh, you know, this channel received X amount of strikes, copyright strikes has been shut down and terminated. They will usually put down, this channel has received a strike from Toei Animation LTD or INC or whatever it is. <clears throat> and that's what they basically use as their, oh, this is why the channel, this is why the video isn't up. This is why you can't watch this right now. And you cannot tell me that you're not surprised that the fans up and sent emails over a picture. In all honesty, I think it's a little weak. Uh, your apology, I I'll admit it was a good apology. I kind of felt sorry for you. I would have accepted your apology if I'd known what in the hell you're talking about. I put it up on Twitter. Anybody understand what he's talking about? And I still have yet to get a response. I've watched the video three times. I have listened to it very carefully. I even put the closed captioning on so I could see the words that he's literally talking. And it still makes no sense to me. He's apologizing for posting a picture of, my guess would be a cease and desist, and it got taken out of context. I would have first off been glad that you posted the picture because now they can't come back like a month or two later and go, oh, he never received it, we need to send him another one, and it just keeps sending you those indefinitely just to keep you in check. 
You can go, no, I received it. I put a picture above it. I tweeted it out. I tweeted a picture of me holding the damn thing. That I'd be glad for, for starters, that you tweeted a picture so the world knows, no, I got it. You can't tell me they didn't see that. But I mostly just don't get as, you made no sense with your apology. It confused the crap out of me. And if the main thing in your apology was that you are upset because the fans, first off, took it upon themselves to send Toei emails, that's out of your hands. You cannot control people's free will. If somebody wants to bitch out a corporation because they're hurting one person, that's their prerogative. You can't stop them. I had to get a drink of water about that, sorry. You can't stop them from bitching out a company just because it's one that's liable to come back and sue you over it. You can, I mean, you don't know if the person's going to send an email. It could be a fan thinking, hey, I'm going to try to help them out. And not realize, hey, okay, I might make it worse for them. They just want to voice their opinion like, hey, you know, stop picking on them. They're not doing anything wrong. And I mean no disrespect. I really don't. I don't mean to sound like speaking with the jawbone of an ass or anything. But your apology basically made it sound like, hey, stop fighting Toei for us. We're tired of getting bitched at by them because you are bitching at them over us. And in my opinion, I mean, you're going to have your fans that are going to be with you regardless. I'm one of them. But you're going to have the fans that are thinking, hey, I wanted to help. Now that I've helped, you made me feel horrible. I don't want anything to do with you anymore. And I honestly am afraid that that's what's going to happen to you now. If it does, the die's been cast. You can't undo what's already been done. But completely calling out a group of people because, oh, they're sending emails to Toei, bitching out Toei because, you know, you guys got a C and D. They could have thought, hey, I'm being nice, I'm trying to help, not realizing that, oh, shit, if I go through with this, it's liable to end badly for me. It's liable to be one of the worst things I could do for them. They're just trying to help. And like I said, what I'm basically taking away besides being on the wrong off ramp, because I don't know where you got off with your apology, is I'm confused. I'm lost. But what I've taken away from it is that you don't want the fans to stick up for you anymore. You don't want the fans to discuss any problems that you have anymore. So like, if your channel gets taken down on YouTube again, I guess the fans are just supposed to suck up and go, well, that's it. No more TFS. I mean, that's, in all honesty, that's what it seems like is going to happen. I mean, you cast the die already, and then I'm just hoping it doesn't come up snake eyes for you over this, over an apology that really made no sense. I don't understand it. I still don't. But anyway, I, I just don't know what else to say other than, okay, you apologize. You feel better? That's great. I'm more worried now about the repercussions that you're going to get that you weren't even thinking about when you did your apology all because I did something stupid. Everybody does something stupid. You're allowed to make mistakes. To err is human. I hate to break it to you. But, yeah, so I feel bad for you. I really do. But I'm more worried you basically shot yourself in the foot in the long run. I don't know. All right, folks, and that will do it this week for the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast. Hey, did you know that my one-year anniversary is coming up this September? That's right. First Saturday in September, it'll be one year that I started recording this podcast. Originally, I started out on Podbean, and I came over to YouTube after I used up all my freebie time on Pod. Oh, sorry, on SoundCloud. I'm sorry, SoundCloud's where I started. I have one up on Podbean. I started out on SoundCloud, and I have been on YouTube since I used up all of my freebie time on SoundCloud. But I have the one-year anniversary coming up. I got something special planned for that. I really, really do. I got something very special planned for that. But 
If you have any ideas on ways I can improve the podcast, or you just want to drop me a line and say hi, you know, send some fan letters, some congratulations, condolences, you want to tell me to go to hell, I accept all kinds of letters and emails. You can send them to acrpodcast at gmail.com. It's all lowercase, by the way. It's acrpodcast at gmail.com. You can also just tweet them to me at Otake Roads on Twitter. If you have any topic ideas for future podcast episodes, send them my way via acrpodcast at gmail.com or tweet them to me at Otake Roads on Twitter. And I doubt you'd want to, but I don't know, maybe you might. If you'd like to sponsor the podcast, I mean, okay, I'm not that popular, but I try. You know, send me an email at acrpodcast at gmail.com. And that'll do it, like I said this week for the podcast. My name's Andrew Rhodes. It's been a pleasure being with you for the last almost hour and a half. And until next week, all I have to say is, Excelsior, true believers! Bye, everybody, and I'll catch you next week here on the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast.